of the Adventures of Artemis and Athena. Artemis, that's Athena. And today we are talking about interior design, something that's kind of near and dear to both of us. Um, we're, we're weirdos. We many, that. many hours on Pinterest. Uh, yes. Duh. Yeah. It's, it's like 2 a.m. texting Pinterest board ideas. <laughs> yeah. um, I think we both kind of like grew up watching the grace adler <laughs> grace adler designs yes Just, yeah. which was so influential i mean you had it yes it's a, it's a sitcom it's a comedy but you had this this woman who was successful and knew what she, what the heck she was talking about and she told you if it was wrong Full and stop. really interior design wasn't really like out there like it is today no like we have hdtv and we have a lot of reno shows but I we think that know. does stem from the fact that our generation grew up on things like Grace Adler and hearing about interior design and going, ooh, that's ooh, interesting. This is interesting, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, like, I was that child that would go with her dad to Lowe's because my dad is an electrician. He gets a tool allowance every year to get the tools he needs for his job. And he would just like drop me off in the paint section and just leave me to my own devices. <laughs> And I think that's kind of where my love of like floor plans, like I love floor plans. I don't know why. <laughs> I doodle happy. floor plans on breaks and at lunch for funsies. Yes. But I also, in high school, I was very lucky in high school, we had this design class and half the semester was on interior design. So I was taught from like 16 how to draw architectural floor plans. And then I started to be an interior design in college and then I just didn't drive with the professor. Great professor, great teacher. There was nothing wrong with wh who she was and what she taught. I just didn't work. So then I went real far away into political science, which yeah, that's, that's really been successful. Um, <laughs> I, I don't have a job in political science. Um, but I have a job yeah. with a real estate firm. So interior design coming back. <laughs> yeah, I think um, like, I mean, guys, like right here, those are paint swatches. Those have been here since I moved into this bedroom. <laughs> like that's been a while. Guys, we're getting ready to move out of this house and into the country. We've been here for almost five years. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm constantly online going, let me buy this cool piece of furniture with nowhere to put it, but I totally want this design. And I think, you know, now that we do have, you know, Discover Plus, um, you know, the ability to watch these design shows on demand whenever we want, I think you're going to start seeing an insurgence of people really taking control of, you know, their own design aesthetics and really making their home theirs and I think there's something really neat about that um, like even on TikTok they have you know little mini series like creators have mini series where hey follow me while I you know remake my bedroom or make over my bathroom on a budget like and that's the thing there, there's so much more accessibility that you can really do very smart, very expensive looking designs without spending a ton of money. But I thought like, that's also a trend for our generation is that we're not necessarily buying 3,000 square feet houses. We really right. do want smaller spaces that feel big, right? but that we put ourselves into. Yes. Well, and I think, you know, especially right now, we're in the thick of a global panini. Um, yes, it's a global panini, guys. I'm gonna put some you know, sausage and cheese on me, okay? <laughs> it's a global pandemic, and you know, people are spending a lot of time in their homes, and they're realizing, you know, if 
this continues, we really need to make this space functional, but still comfortable because, you know, with traditional like office jobs, you're in an office, you don't have a whole lot of leeway to design. Mm -hmm. Now with people working from home, you have the ability to really, you know, take that spare bedroom and turn it into the office you always wanted. Or, you know, if you're like me and you are, your space is your bedroom, you know, creating different areas that are still part of the full bedroom, but still a functional workspace that is not overly cluttered. Right. And it's just fun. It is. <laughs> I have so many things on my Pinterest board. Like I said, I love design. I wanted to be an interior designer, so I have a ton of things on my Pinterest board. But I have I think I have a very clear aesthetic that is forming. And it's not what I was when like my high school project was we had to design and draft a, a house. And it was all very dark dark reds and medieval like I was full on medieval Lord of the Rings in this house. All of the damask, the 90s. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The 90s like, damask for it. And I was going to attest to what I sent her now. That is 100% not <laughs> what my house is ever going to look like. It's very modern meets Victorian bright light colors. Like plain. Yeah. Which, like, and then there's me, where I'm just like, let's put all of the things... Very eclectic. In space. It's eclectic. Yes, like, this, like, this is my great aunt's painting. My grandmother hid it under her bed. <laughs> Don't ask me why. But I have this, and then, like, right across the the room is, like, Rosie the Riveter. Like... <laughs> Which can work in a space. Like, my space is very clean lines, but, like, my pops of color are coming from my nerd collections, my nerd art, and my books. Oh, dear Lord. When I have to have a room with just a library. Which really bugs me. I'm not going to lie. I love a library. But the mismatch of colors and sizing really drives me nuts. It's like this OCD trigger where I'm like, they all don't look the same. They don't have the same color. How do I organize this? This is driving me nuts. But I can't put the fantasy book next to the fashion book. See, and that's that's kind of where I'm at too. Like, my my end goal is to have a tiny house. Like, mm -hmm. that's, that's my end goal. But I'm also a creator. So I'm like, I need that extra bedroom to be, yeah. like, my workspace. And I'm sitting here going, I have way too much crap. And I think that's what we were seeing. We're seeing a lot of people, you, you want to have things to fill up the space that feel like you, but I think we want to declutter. Yes. Which is hard as I stare at my wall of Funko Pops. <laughs> but I also, I'm like Artemis, I'm, I'm kind of living just in a bedroom space because I'm at home right now with my parents, which I know when I get my own space will not be cluttered yeah. it'll it'll fill out yeah for sure well and I think like like with you and I still like being at home it's a testament to kind of our generation and how we're trying to figure out what is our space and what works for us and our budgets and everything and I think that's we're, we're more budget conscious. We're not going to yeah. just leap into a very expensive purchase and pray that it yeah, works. That it works. And, and that term house poor. We're not going to do that. Um, and just a testament to our generation and, and coming out during the recession. For me, yeah. I graduated during the Great Recession. Um, but that also influences, I think, our design. Yeah, we're much think, more picky in what we want. We're just not going to fill a well, space and, with with this. We're going to spend hours online and interesting I was actually, and searching. Honestly, like even like last night, I was wide awake at like three o'clock in the morning, and I was reading an article 
where you're seeing a lot more millennials doing upcycled mm -hmm. pieces because we're not we're kind of tired of the fast furniture movement we don't want something that looks like something expensive but is really crap like right. we would much rather spend our money on something that we know is well made we know is has already lasted you know 50 70 years or whatever and is going to last us another 50 and that we can put our stamp on it because then we can yeah. reupholster this this piece it has great lines all it needs is new color, new stain, new upholstery. And with the things like HDTV and being able to watch and, and kind of being taught, we can do these things ourselves. Now, yes. I'm going to say, you. do not try to do plumbing or electrical no. or your roof. Don't, don't do that without a licensed person. Leave major <laughs> renos to the professionals but do you want to paint something but you painting, can paint something reupholster yeah you can learn yeah there are many things on youtube do not follow the electric the, the electrics or the no. plumbing no no, no no just leave that leave. unless you're just gonna like plug in a lamp that you can recover the lamp that's you know. <laughs> but like for my family um we're currently, like I said, we're currently renovating this house so that we can sell it and move out to the country where we have room to do what we want. And my, <laughs> my father, I love him dearly, loves David Bromstadt from My Lottery Dream Home. <laughs> and like, we'll watch My Lottery Dream Home, Hometown, um, property brothers brother versus brother like on repeat so we always have hgtv <laughs> on our tv when i'm working from home that's what's on tv is hgtv and i'm getting ideas i'm yeah. a, i'm a nate nate and jeremiah fan but i feel like my aesthetic also leans towards them i yeah. play more with color but like their clean aesthetic is kind of what i like see and for me i tend to lean towards the ben and air napier kind of design that's very homey very farmhouse but still clean and modern um, because i grew up in farmhouses most of my life that were not updated um my grandparents house had the wood paneling from the 70s <laughs> and <laughs> my face oh <laughs> But that was them. It was the old farmhouse feel. But I love the idea of updating it and making it more accessible and more sustainable. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another testament to, you know, the millennials really kind of coming into their own now as designers and as, you know, construction workers and um, woodworkers. We're finding, like, all of these heritage style um arts coming back and i think that is really showing up in interior design right now yeah because you're missing that clean aesthetic i love graphic which is why i like that modern victorian the victorians are really graphic um in art i mean maybe they're a little graphic <laughs> that's a whole nother tunnel but like they like bold color bold prints I just like it in a modern aesthetic so it, the entire room is not five different types of floral. <laughs> Victorian. Um, there is a historical reason for that that turns real nerdy. Not gonna go there. But like I love a good you know graphic bold piece of art and color. I just like it pared down. Yes. But a lot of the things are things I would want to make like an end table, I'm going to redo it. I'm going to recover right. it and make it versus yeah. trying to buy a $500 end table. Right. And like right now I'm currently upgrading my furniture and I'm seeing all of these amazing ideas, but I'm like, I am not spending $500 on two end tables that have no storage 
they're not going to fit the height of the new bed, why would I bother? That's the thing, storage. We want storage. Most of the places we live do not have closets. Like, my closet will fit, like, ten articles of clothing. That, right there. Yep. I, I live in what is considered a folk Victorian house. It was built in 1917. So it is a hundred and four years old. You don't really have closets in um, no older that, homes because they had right wardrobes there. and they had right trunks. That that right there, that that door, is my closet. It's like the size of you. Yeah, it's it's not. You can you can walk into it and that's it. That's all yeah, you. You can't turn. You can't. <laughs> nope. 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 But. That, that, I think, makes us more creative. And I think that's why we watch HGTV well, and, that... and why we love interior design, because we're working with spaces that we can't necessarily change, yeah. but we can still make them work. Yeah, and I think that's part of the create, creative process behind interior design is how can we make this, this area both livable and beautiful, but still be functional? without it being clunky and cluttered and just kind of heavy and I feel like and it's not a superficial thing it's not an unnecessary thing I think it's incredibly necessary for human beings because it speaks to our culture it speaks to our heritage it speaks to our individuality and expression and I think everyone needs that and everyone does that even when I was in my dorm room I had my own kind of trying to add design to these pieces that I couldn't do anything with because of storm furniture. And I think that's human. That's human yeah. beings. And we're always going to try to take whatever space we're living in and make it our own. Yeah. No matter what. No matter where we're living. No matter. But yay! So interior we love interior design. design. You'll probably see a lot of us trying to share <laughs> our Pinterest mood boards. Yes. And if you guys want me to take you along with the renovations, let us know down in the comments um, because, you know, we are getting ready to move and you will probably be seeing a lot of renovation on my end. Um, because I'm, I'm doing a lot of dream shopping. I am saving up to purchase my own space here soon. So yes. that's going to be a reno. I I'm am, probably going to gut the whole house as much as I can. I am hoping to um, have enough space in the next um, adventure area that we purchase to build a tiny house, whether it's just like an in-law suite or in my case, an adult daughter who cannot afford to live on her own. <laughs> um, sweet. But yeah. To your design. Yay. So check us it. out. Like, share, tune Guys, in. We have a TikTok now. We're, we're TikTokers. Well, she's a TikToker. I'm a TikToker. I produce random content. <laughs> she sent it to me. I put it up. <laughs> but guys check us out on instagram check us out on facebook tiktok here the whole nine yards you know what to do until next time i'm artemis i'm athena we'll see you next time